this is Deborah Woods again. I um, wanted to tell you how it is that I came to my faith and my testimony that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God and that it is true and I love it um, to the point where I am going through all of these steps to make my read along with the Book of Mormon videos available. Um, I was 16 and I had been searching for a church for eight years and um, fruitlessly everywhere I looked I was disappointed and I much to my chagrin found myself sitting in front of a couple of missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I had a chip on my shoulder as big as Texas and I was ready to bite their heads off but by the end of the lesson I realized that they had given me more information and taught me more about Jesus Christ and how to follow him than all of my eight years of searching and within a month I had been baptized it had next to nothing to do with the Book of Mormon. It had ne next to nothing to do with Joseph Smith, the prophet. Um, but I said, if that's part of the package, then okay, fine. And I kind of lived on that for several years. And oh, how old was I? 42 or something when a friend of my a dear friend of mine who I had been roommates with in college and um, and looked up to her so much as a spiritual giant for me uh, told me that she was leaving the church and that she had a problem with Joseph Smith and the temple and I was so shaken up by this she didn't go into any detail, but I, I thought, well, I have just been sort of saying, if that's part of the package, that's part of the package for all these years. And that's that might have been enough for a while, but at this point, it's not enough anymore. I need to know. And over the next couple of years, I, probably more than a couple, um, I did everything I could to study about Joseph Smith. Um, actually, the first time I went to the temple, no sooner had I walked in than it was like, oh, her problem with the temple is not my problem with the temple. I do knew, I knew I had a testimony of the temple. I wanted a testimony of Joseph Smith. And after a few years of studying, and I went to Nauvoo, I wanted to walk where he walked. I wanted to touch buildings that he had helped build and touch things he had touched, stand in a, in a grove of trees where he had preached. I thought if I was surrounded by the spirits of all those who actually did know him in person, that maybe I could pick up on that. And, but all that left me with was this aching desire to meet him myself. And because I knew if I met him in person, if I looked in his eyes, if I heard his voice, if I shook his hand, I would know whether or not he was a prophet. And I just, it, there was some, I had this overwhelming sense of, it's not fair that I can't. Why can't I? Well, I wasn't, that's just not, I, and I was like, that's so stupid, Debbie. Of course you can't. You can't, that, he's dead. You know, it's, you just, that's not going to be in your story. That's not going to be part of your story. And I was like, but I couldn't, I couldn't stop longing for that. As ridiculous as it, it sounded even to me, let alone anybody else. And then one day, I was at the LDS Booksellers Convention in Salt Lake City. I can't remember what year it was. It was probably 2006 or something like that. And I went every year since I, 
I started writing books that sold at LDS bookstores um, in 1997. I'd been going to this convention every year. And I, I saw this young man and I knew who he was because I'd heard about him. His mother had, was a descendant, and he was too, of Joseph Smith. And she had discovered this and, and somehow or other, not that she was trying to, but she ended up being introduced to the missionaries and being taught the lessons and joining the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, an actual descendant of Joseph Smith. And um, she would give firesides. And she had a son and a daughter who she felt like looked like Joseph and Emma. So she made costumes, period costumes for them, and dressed them up to look like Joseph and Emma. And she would go around and give firesides. Well, I'd heard about her. And so when I saw this young man, I'd seen his picture before, and I knew who he was. And it was from across the room. And he saw me and he looked like, oh, there you are. And he strode across the room straight to me, stuck out his hand, looked me in the eyes and said, it's so good to see you. And I was like, okay. And he goes, ah, I, want you, I want to introduce you to my mother. And he took me over to the booth they had and introduced me to his mother. And I was just like flabbergasted by this whole experience. And I went and found my, my husband and I told him, you have got to meet this young man. And I was sort of telling him this story and I took him over to the booth. And when we got there, the young man was just, he had his feet up on a, a table. He looked like, I am so sick of being dressed up in this costume and sitting here and oh, I want to go home. He, just, he couldn't have been more disinterested. And I said, hi, I wanted to introduce you to my husband. And he goes, uh, okay, whatever, you know. And I was like, my husband said, so why did you want me to meet this kid? And I'm like, well, that is not the same young man that came striding across the room and shook my hand and and all of a sudden I was like because it wasn't for that little short time I got my my heart's desire he looked me in the eye he shook my hand and he greeted me personally is what I wanted and it was just this gift and I realized I'd already had a testimony of Joseph Smith I just wanted that experience and I got it now long before that and ever since I really started reading the Book of Mormon I I didn't have any problem with it for the eight years I was uh, looking for ways to follow Jesus, I tried reading the Bible and it made no sense to me. And I just didn't get it. And I thought, what's the matter with me? It's because I wasn't raised with this. I didn't go to a church that taught about Jesus when I was a kid and it really bothered me. And so then I, I took an Old Testament class and I was appalled. And I had to just put it down because I couldn't stand reading the Old Testament. I, I was abhorred at the, the, the stories. They just, I'm, it was like blood and guts and deceit and, oh, I just thought it was horrible. And I, I, I the Bible did nothing for me. I, be, I said, I know it's true, it's the word of God, but it, it, I, it never comforted me. It never inspired me. <laughs> and, um... I'll tell you what, the Book of Mormon, right out of the right out of the starting gate, is engaging, is inspiring, is amazing. And in doing, uh, I made a commitment when I was in my 
when I was 20 years old that I would read the Book of Mormon every day, or that I would read the Book of Mormon at least once or maybe twice a year. And I'd forgotten that commitment and I found that commitment I'd made in an old journal and thought, you know, this was when I was 58. And I thought, oh my gosh, I didn't do that. I didn't keep that commitment. And I thought, oh well, I can start now. And so I did. And that's what I've done since then. And it's so powerful, I can't even tell you. And and so as I'm I feel very connected to the 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 prophets in the record. I feel very connected to Joseph Smith. And I hear my own personal story in the story of Joseph Smith. I hear my own personal story in the story of Nephi and the other prophets in the Book of Mormon. And it is so clear and it speaks so to me. And because it comes to us in, in the purity it was written in and the Bible has been translated and retranslated and so it's changed, sorry, it's been changed over the years. That's, that's why even to this day, I have a hard time reading it. But I, I took a course from a Hebrew scholar on, the, on Genesis and I was like, it blew my mind. I said, oh my gosh, it all makes sense now. <laughs> and I love it. I love it now. But um, there have been alterations, there have been things taken out, there were changes, there were things left out and tweaked and, and it doesn't tell the same story as when it was first written. And the Book of Mormon testifies that that's what happened. And all I know is in my own personal experience, when I read the Book of Mormon, I get the full picture and it's beautiful. And I just want to share my love and testimony of the Book of Mormon in the best way that I can by sharing my talent and telling it in my own words. Not meaning my own words, it's not, they're not my words, it's right out of the scripture, but it's my voice, in my voice. I'm telling the story, it's a wonderful story, and if you don't have the same kind of imagination that I do, you might never have read it that way. And uh, I, it comes to life in a way, even as I'm reading it, I'm like, wow, this is such a cool story. Uh, reading it out loud at, with conviction and with emotion, um, it's really powerful. So anyway, I wanted to testify in the name of Jesus Christ that this is his book and it testifies of him boldly and beautifully and it'll touch your heart and it will fill you with the spirit and all you have to do is read it and if you want to read it by listening to me read it along with you great I I I pray that it will go out and do good in the lives of many people. And I offer this to you in the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.